and we are now live. Emmett, brother, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. I'm sure people can see the cool fucking sign that you made for me in the background and sent all the way to the UK. Absolutely sick. I cannot thank you enough for it. Um, hard work. I can just see the craftsmanship. Uh, it's a beautiful piece, man. So thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. It was a pleasure building it. I, I just, I like building signs and art and sometimes I just get the, maybe the passion or the idea or something and and that was, I want to hit you up and talk to you about it and that was, and we just went from there and that and now you got it. Oh man, thank you so much. Honestly, like, I really wish I could like, let you feel what I feel about it for one second, just to know how grateful I am. Do you know what I mean? Because it, I don't feel like yeah. it's words are enough. Do you know what I mean? I feel like you need to feel the feeling, just like yeah. the excitement when I was waiting for it, unpackaging it, and I'm looking at this bad boy, and I'm like, mate, when I get my studio going on, this is going up, this is going to be sick. Like, and then I'm turning it on, and the LEDs are going, and I'm like, fuck, it's got LEDs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> LEDs just add another level to it, you know. And I that's I stuck some lights behind a sign a long time ago and it just made a huge difference. And I was like, man, I need to get, you know, I need to get more acquainted with this stuff and get better at using it. And so now it's become something I think about when I'm building the projects and so that I can have the lights in the right place and you can, you know, it gets complicated if you start putting a lot of light in something. Fortunately, signs aren't real big, but um, yeah, so it's something I start to plan for and I'm still learning with it, you know, because sometimes I'll, I did a sign for, um, uh, I think it was Arc Junkies sign, somebody's sign, and it casted just this awesome shadow on the wall when it was on a flat, smooth wall. And I thought it was amazing and so I was like I'm gonna use that on the next sign that same technique and it didn't turn out the way I thought it would turn out and so you know I'm still kind of learning um, you know it still looked awesome I just didn't get that little detail I was looking for with the lighting and I, so um, you know I'm still learning so for the people that are going to be tuning in and listening are tuning in live um, tell them about your background and kind of your journey to where you're at now um, when I was like 19 years old, I was, uh, was working in a grocery store and I decided to, um, I, it wasn't really a good fit and I was starting to hang out with my brother a lot more. I had just moved back to, back to the home area, was trying to go to college and just wasn't really going anywhere. And so when I moved back to, um, Iowa or in humble Iowa, um, my brother, was riding motorcycles and building cars and just doing all kinds of stuff. And so I was hanging out with him a lot and I ended up buying a motorcycle and I got a, uh, got a job working in a trailer factory, screwing floors down in a inside trailers and like putting the siding on the trailers. And, um, I, uh, started to learn to weld on the job and then, it really just kind of started there. The motorcycle, I was always looking at how I could crop and change things on it and modify it. And, you know, my brother could paint and his friends could fabricate and paint. And so I was learning from them. And, um, and you know, it, it all really kind of was from having different jobs. I enjoyed working with my hands. I figured that out. And, and I liked welding. And I could make decent money welding. It was the most money I could make for the education I had. And the area that I was in and my brother had been telling me you know you need to pick up a trade or something you know you need something so you can make good money and so you know I skipped around to like I had four different jobs in that area um, over a course of 15 some years something like that and different fabrication jobs and um, I went from building uh, the trailers to welding those and then I switched over to um, building like pressure washer machines and parts washers for a company. And they would mostly fabricate the pieces, cut holes, 
bend things and then they would show up at my bay and I would put all the pieces together and finish it and weld it up and ship it off. And I learned a lot about, you know, light fabrication then. Um, worked with, you know, looking back, I worked with a lot of skilled people and just didn't realize it at the time. And um, I went from there to, um, I switched up and worked in a cabinet shop in a motorhome factory. And inside that place, I moved around a little bit and they ended up putting me in a, um, on a team. And so I was, I was a team captain or whatever they called it. And then I had three people that worked with me. And as a team, we built motorhomes from start to finish. And so, you know, like floors, roll bars, wiring, plumbing, finish work. Uh, the idea was is that the customer was outside the door. That was our, our concept of building. And um, it would go through quality control. It would come back to us. We would fix everything that we maybe didn't do up to par. And then we got paid on bonus too. So we had to, we were kind of uh, schooled in efficiency and um, workspace efficiency and tool storage and, um, and yeah, just being efficient. And so I was fortunate in that job because I learned to kind of create a product, bring it to a finishing point and um, also being uh, critical because you had to go back and fix your crappy work, you know, or whatever it is you might not have done good enough. And, um, <clears throat> and then I went after that, I, I did that for about four years and then I went into uh, welding again. And then this was more uh, food grade stainless steel conveyor type work. So like uh, Tyson Foods would hire the company that I worked for and we would fabricate you know, something, whatever they needed really. And um, so it was a lot more complicated fabrication. And then uh, it was all stainless steel TIG work. And there I had a really good boss who was military trained in welding. And he was always willing to teach. And so, you know, when on slow days, when we weren't real busy, he would tell us to go out and practice and weld, you know, and so we would set up different, he would show me different techniques that he learned in the military. And so some of those techniques I've been able to take with me, you know, and, um, and then from that job, we ended up moving from Iowa to Missouri. Uh, and that was about 10 years ago. And, um, when I moved to Missouri, I started my business and I started out doing home improvement with really what I'm doing today as the goal. Um, and I, uh, just put in doors. I would, you know, new countertops, bathroom remodels, kitchen remodels, anything I could do to stay busy. And then to get home and start working in the shop in the evenings. And along the way, because I'm in clients' homes, I would show them my artwork that I do on my phone. I always have my portfolio right, right there, you know? And it was, and I would just open it up and like, oh, you know, I built this and that and I'd show them things. And then they would either tell somebody or they would remember a year later and call me for something. And, um, and it, it slowly just has taken over my home improvement side of what I was doing. And, uh, and then I got a job for a restaurant and the, and when I got this job for a restaurant, it was like one of those, your back's against the wall moment. You really kind of got to do what you say you're going to do. And um, I was fortunate enough because of that job, a, a designer that I had met brought me in on it. He knew I messed, you know, did metal work and woodwork. And these people were asking for that very thing. They wanted metal and wood put together. And so I threw them a bid and I, at the time I felt it was low. I, I think it was actually spot on. But um, I, did, I was willing to do it for half that just to do it. So because it was a restaurant and it was in town and people are going to be sitting, in, you know, using the furniture and stuff I make. And so that really got things rolling here in Columbia. Um, that turned – they're awesome people, the owners. They gave out my business card to this day. They still do. And um, – since then, I've been put in touch with Fretboard Coffee, 
Um, I've remodeled their whole place, all new furniture inside there, new stage for their music events. And it's a small, really neat, uh, kind of got a shabby chic look to it in the place. It's in the basement of like a very old building. And so there's paint chipping off on the rafters on the inside and there's, you know, it's really cool. And um, so I built a lot of stuff for that guy and, you know, and it just kept rolling. And now I'm working with a lot of home builders and, you know, uh, designers, architects. It's in the last year, it's really, it's really evolved. Bad man. How that you've been sort of passionate about it and always have been kind of driven to that you had your goal, you know, kind of where you wanted to be and what you were doing and all things with building platforms to where you are today. It's mad the kind of, because a lot of people would maybe have that goal in mind or their own goal in mind, but then just end up settling for doing counters in houses, whatever yourself you kind of always seem to have done forward and then turned and then forward so it's kind of fascinating towards the character do you know what i mean the way you are that you can see you're driven you know by your work and by your passion base yeah i enjoy it um i said when i was like 25 years old i told my wife um i had had like a week off and um, we were remodeling our home, and I, it was like it was just a great week to work, stay at home, and do things. And I remember I enjoyed it so much, and I said, you know, I just want to work for myself, build cool shit, and sell it out of my garage. And that was that was a long time ago, and I'm, that thought's never left lost, or left my mind. When I moved to Columbia, it became more real. But I think about four or five years ago is where I really focused on it, where I, I really saw that it needed to happen and that I, if nobody was going to discover me and make it happen for me, that I was in control of the whole thing, you know, and, and it became more real to me, maybe even six years ago, that, that, that maybe I should uh, stop making excuses. Maybe, you know, maybe I am making excuses to not get out there and get better at what I'm doing. And, um, and, but I also needed to do it. I, I need to be working at home to be able to, uh, take care of my kids and be available for them. Um, my youngest is 17. He's affected by autism. So six years ago, I started to see, realize that Ethan's, um, always going to live with us which is great you know we, we love having him here he's, he's just a neat kid but it became real to me and then my wife was working a full-time job where she carried the benefits for the health benefits and so that that's important for us to keep and so I was going out you know we traded off taking the kids to school and stuff but ultimately I'd have to take the kids to school and then go out and knock out a door or, you know, work at a remodel project, pack all my tools and be home by two thirty, three o'clock to get Ethan off the bus. And so I was not only driving myself crazy by having to go out and chase money and then come home and make my dream come true. But I was also, um, you know, I'm thinking about the kids. And so now working from home, it's so much easier to take care of Ethan if he has an off day. And like right now, we, this year we started doing homebound school where he does his homework and everything on the computer. And so he's just, he's 40 steps from me. And so I'll go inside and I'll take a break, go inside, make breakfast or whatever I need to do to keep him going for the day and, um, and take care of him. And so, you know, it's, I felt like there was a little bit of pressure on my side to, to make this happen, to be able to take care of him. And, but I also had to make money, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so there was the last 10 years have been, um, a lot of work, but in the last 
four years, five years, there's been way more focus on getting to this point where I am today. Just, you know, I, we were messaging about my move and stuff like that. You know, I just moved into the shop, um, two months ago and you know, that's been in my sights for a long time. I've been, I felt like I was going crazy saying the words when I get a shot, when I get a shot, when I get a shot, you know, I was building everything. Your sign was built out of two car garage and all the staircases. If you go to my Instagram page and all my staircases, all that stuff that you see was built out of a two car garage. So I was doing everything the hard way it felt like, you know, but I was so willing to, I was so willing to do it and to make it happen that, you know, I knew that's what it was going to take was those extra hours and those efforts. And it wasn't easy. I mean, there was nights I absolutely furious because I get all set up outside to spray something and a rainstorm would roll in and I would have to unpack and put everything back in the shop, you know? So it always provided this challenge in my job. I think by having the shop, my, my efficiency has increased by 50%. Yeah, easily. And Don't worry about ever and fucking all the other, other nature things that may become, um, an interesting point yeah. as well that you kind of touched on. Maybe that was your why. I so driven to achieve because you needed to. You know what I mean? It's like this is my why. This yeah. is why I'm getting up early. This is why I'm grafting my fucking bollocks off. Obviously, be family, but there was like that main drive there that was kind of carry you through those days where you were like, you know what? I can't be fucked today. I can't be bothered to work, or I can't be. I don't want to do this, or. You know, you're having some hard shit, you know, it's raining and you're getting stressed, but uh, in the back of your mind, you're like, no, why I'm doing this. No, uh, I want to be at yeah. home for my kids, I be able to support them where I want to be. And I think that's a powerful thing when people can find their why and use it to drive them. Yeah, and, and you know, there's there's definitely that, but I also have, I also really wanted it for myself. You know, I really like to, um, you know, it's just been something that I've always wanted to do and, and, uh, I had a great reason to do it. And, um, but I, I think I would have done it anyways, but, uh, you never know. Maybe I wouldn't have been as driven to do it, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, um, that's it. I mean, you kind of had two, two reasons why, but maybe the, yeah. um, excuses and things like that. The reasons I have um, so I'll look at it this way because I've got a, a kind of a example to try and bring up with it so my cousin always wanted to travel and she would never travel she always had an excuse why she'd never travel but, oh, I can't work blah 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 um, unfortunately like my uncle passed and literally suddenly her excuses went she was like, I'm going, I'm traveling, I'm going to go see the world, I'm doing this. Nothing's matter. kind of like the extra push. You know I mean, so instead of she wanted to do it herself and she was reliant on herself and driven to do it, then she had this added reason as to why she was going to do it. And maybe same for yourself, like you wanted to do it, you wanted to achieve it. There was a few little weeks here and there. And then, you know, you just thought, fuck it, going for it. And started doing other things. I mean, obviously, there's other um, variables that play a part. Probably certain yeah. things like maybe someone was like, "Oh, you ain't gonna make it, mate." Like, but it's all added to yeah. you being in your journey. There was definitely some of that. Um, I've had people try to steer me to not put my style into the work I do. And, you know, they're like, hey, you know, what, why are you, why don't you go to Hobby Lobby and look at what they're, that's a little store here um, in the States that just sells cheap furniture. You know, it's cute stuff and it looks great and it serves its purpose, but they're like, why don't you make more stuff, like go there and take ideas, like, because they're somebody else's ideas, they're not mine. And 
there was a bit of finding my style, you know, there was a little bit of that, like where it took me some time to make it look right. And um, I think I'm still like working on that. You know, I think it will continue to evolve. But now today, you know, I just built this, uh, this cooking cart for a new restaurant opening up. And I put some, you know, if I could have made it a square structure and made it just straightforward, but I added different pieces. I built my own feet for it that have, you know, my own. I when I say it's my style, it's because I drew it. You know, I actually drew it out. I cut it out, and you know, I didn't. It's not square or anything, and put some holes in it to just give it a little style and um, and welded. You know, made the own feet mounts for it and and everything. You know, and so everything looks handmade. You know, and. So I'm just now figuring out how to tastefully put my style on the things that people want me to build them. And sometimes I can't do it. I have a small project that a lady wanted me to make a mount for a, for a bell, an old bell, but she wants to hang it on her wall. She said, you know, I just need a mount to put it on the wall. And I was like, do you want me to like put my style into it? She goes, not really. <laughs> and, and that's fine. You know, she's the client. I want to give them what they want. So she just got a real straightforward bracket, you know, that I built and, um, it's, it's whatever they want, you know? So, but when somebody says, do your thing on it, I love that. And then when you did that with the sign, it was like, you didn't really have a logo design that was fit for making a sign, you know? And I was like, okay, I can do what I want. So, you know, the microphone and things like that just kind of started popping in my head and, um, you know, I, I, that sketch I sent you, I mean, it essentially looks, I'll send you a picture of it, you know, um, I, cause I have it in my phone, it essentially looks the same, you know, and okay. so it's fun. It's fun to have something in your head and then actually create it and have it turn out the way you thought it would. And not all of them happen. You know, there's, there's some times where you got to cut things apart. There's been times I've had to start completely over. And um, I think when when we talk about like four or five years ago when I really decided to focus on it, one of the things that would stop me, the hurdles maybe I would put in front of myself would be I was afraid to make mistakes. I was afraid to get started and then realize I was wrong and um, I'd have to start over. And um, listening to different podcasts um, like Rogan's and stuff like that kind of helped me, you know, see that like him talking about bombing on stage and things like that and then having to start over again. I mean, that all kind of I, I, I learned from that a little bit and decided to stop making excuses of reasons why, why I won't go out and work and um what if I fail? I started making myself willing to take steps backwards and that I just have to get started. And once I did that a few times, I found out that I could build whatever I wanted to as long as I sat down and I planned it and actually showed up and started cutting and building. I can sit and think about it. I could sit and think about all the reasons it won't work, or I can sit there and think about reasons why it will work and just get to work and make it happen. And, and I feel like now, you know, five years later, that I've gotten into the rhythm of just getting started. Like, it's easier for me to just go out and get started. The procrastination is a lot less. The, you know, I'm able to pull from other projects, so it's a little less scary. You know, I've, I'm the experience helps a lot. And, um, you know, my first staircase I built was two full flights of stairs inside of a $1.5 million home. And um, I built that out of a two-car garage. And it was, you know, each, each stringer weighed 450 pounds. And so I don't have like heavy lifting equipment in my shop. So I kept those, each, there was four stringers and I kept each stringer on carts on each end so I could roll them in and out of my garage 
to work on them. And it was summer when I built this staircase. And um, I, and it turned out great. I mean, it, it, it all fit, it all worked out. So I got my first staircase project that was two full flights. It was the scariest project I ever did. And it was the project that put me into this full time. Because it was, I don't remember the number on the project, but the down payment was enough for me to go, okay, I gotta go buy a new welder. And now I don't have to install doors anymore. I have enough money to live off of to get to the next installment on this project. Because I, I, I don't have business loans. I don't have debt on my business. Everything that I buy and, you know, like I have a lot of support from my mother. She helps me out in getting some heavier, bigger price tools, you know, sometimes. But um, for the most part, all the tools, trailers um, I have were bought with the down payment on projects or the backside payment. So, and you know, I just, I've continually reinvested. And so I stopped selling doors and I stopped doing trim work and I, I closed the home improvement side of my business and then only would take on projects that were like cabinets or just custom fabricated things. And, uh, and I've been busy ever since. Been pretty cool. Your, um, your business is paying for itself now. Yeah, it is. Um, it's been it's been paying for itself, and it's been you know putting some money in my pocket. I probably could go make more money working for somebody else. I probably you know definitely could do that, and but it doesn't fit my lifestyle. It doesn't fit what I want to do. And if I, you know, I don't know one dude that works with his hands and is crazy rich. I don't know one of them, you know? And so I don't plan on being crazy rich off of what I do. But if I can, if I can work to the point to where I'm solely doing artwork, like grandfather clocks, wall clocks, signs, 100% of the time, um, and make a living, I'm good. You know, I'd, I'd be happy doing that for sure. And oh, uh, Sorry. I know I can do it. Until, no, it's okay. I, I know I can do it until I'm, until I die. You know, I don't, I'll, it'll always change. I'll always be interested. And uh, I don't think I'll ever really get burned out with it. I mean, that's, that's the part of it. Creative it. Problem solving it. Don't go and um, that passion and drive behind it and thing you know money isn't everything kind of people too much into money think you're gonna buy them happiness and cliche cliche fans up but what you fundamentally freedom to be able to do yeah. do the yeah. for some people they need a lot of money that's the type of freedom for yourself you know, you've got money to do what you want to do. You're happy. That's kind of pretty much what it's about and what matters. I think so. Um, it. I have several people tell me that I'm I'm living the American dream. You know, uh, I I can't disagree with that at all. I think that um, I'm, but I also think I'm very fortunate that with. Um, the support I've had, friends and family, and uh, my wife, and my wife especially. I mean, she's she put up a lot of crap with me, you know, and um, just working a lot of hours and stuff like that. But she's always been supportive of it, and like, man, she cooks and cleans and does all the laundry, and so I can come out here and make this happen. But she knows it's just as important to our family as I do. And she also knows how much I care about it and, and how much I love it. So it's, it's, she's, she keeps, you know, books straight and, um, <clears throat> with, with the growth and moving into this shop, you know, we, we've hired an accountant to help us keep track of things and just make sure that we do things right. You know, I don't want to get in any trouble with the, the government on taxes and things like that. And, um, I, you know, I want to make sure that I can keep doing this and 
Um, I, I failed accounting in high school or they might have passed me. I might have got a passing grade, but like, I'm sure that I'm sure that I failed, you know, I and I'm, I don't care about it. I, I don't like doing it. It's not my thing. I mean, I, I do care about my business and how it's doing, but I want to put the right people in place to handle that for me so that I can focus on what I'm doing here. And the worst thing ever is to be um, worrying about money and being broke and trying to get a project done. It just, it really kind of jams up the creativity for me. And so it's important to me to stay on the plus side of things. So I make sure I charge right. I don't overcharge. I just make sure I charge right so that I get paid to build these things for people. Because people want them too. Uh, the relationships I have with home builders at this point, you know, they call me, call me for a staircase and then they'll call me for a shelf bracket to, you know, Hey, I need this tomorrow. Is there any way, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I just love being a part, helping out and doing what I do. It's, it's super, it's just real enjoyable. So who's the biggest guest? Like sent some, yes, sorry biggest person you sent something to sent some um uh joe rogan uh the grandfather clock i built for him um that's probably the biggest one um i thought uh i thought that one i didn't know what that was going to do and that thing just really continues to uh pay back in one way or the other and, and that's that project is one of those things where, you know, I've talked about this before, but where some doubters came in and were like, to ask me why they thought I was crazy for building it for free and sending it to him. And what I was seeing was a great opportunity and I was willing to fail at it. I was willing for it to, to just be gone forever and never be seen. He could have opened that box and been like, this is the ugliest thing I've ever fucking seen. And it's now not going in my studio. And that thought crossed my mind a million times. And, but when I, when people said, that's not really him I'm talking to, or they would say, um, it'll never happen. Or, you know, whatever negative thing they said really drove me to, to do it even, you know, even more. And it took me a few months in my spare time. And I was in a one car garage at that point. And, uh, you know, I got it done and sent it to him and it took, I think it took a couple months for him to set it up, which, you know, he's got better things to do. And, you know, Jamie has dude and, but they, uh, ended up setting it up and then man, a, a light went off in my head of like more ideas of what to do reaching out to podcasts you know i i felt like rogan's clock was a big foot in the door um and uh so then i ended up building one for brendan Schaub and brian callen for the fighter and the kid and um didn't quite get as much pop out as that one. You know, I put a lot more, which, which is fine. Um, I, I don't really expect anything out of it. I'm more curious what will happen, you know? And, um, when you think about it and you wonder, but, um, they, they posted it from their uh, fan page and, you know, talked about it on their podcast. And so that was pretty cool. And now it's in sight. If you watch their podcast, which is pretty cool. Um, there's a lot more detail in that one than Rogan's yeah. and, uh, but, uh, it was, I really, I mean, I built that thing for me more than anything that was 100% in my mind. I, I wanted to build that clock. I just didn't want to build it and have it sit in my basement. I wanted to build it and if for it to be somewhere, you know, um, I, I don't want to be an artist with my own artwork. You know, it, it's just not something that I want to be an artist that has, I just want to sprinkle my stuff all over. And, um, the podcast, uh, 
you know, I've done a few signs and stuff like that. And that's, that's been pretty cool to do. And so that was my focus for about a year. And now I'm changing my focus to more local. And so I can keep, um, I, I look at my analytics on Instagram and stuff like that a lot to, to, cause I think about the marketing and, um, the work type of work I want. And, um, I, out of the, all the people that follow me on Instagram, 3% of them are local, like in this town. So that's like, this town is 120,000, something like that. And it's a college town and I have 300 people <laughs> that follow me in this town. And the, the last year I've met, I think I brought in five home builders that I work for. And they're just now, you know, people are just now starting to discover that I'm here. So it came, it came uh, to my mind that I need to do better on the local marketing. And so I've turned my focus away from like the podcast and things like that. I'll tell you what I would like to do is, have you seen the, the old school logo for the UFC where they have the, the guy standing on the earth? And then the banner wrapped around it saying "Ultimate Fighting Championship." Yeah, I want to make I want to make that in a metal sign, and you know, all backed up with LEDs and stuff like that. That would probably be the next thing I would do for you know. I don't care who would take it, it'd be Rogan or Dana White or you know whatever. But I'd like to build something like that next. You know, that one of those for me things. But I don't want to keep it. I want it to go out into the world. You know, somewhere. And uh, so anyway, that's, yeah, unfortunately, I've got so many projects to do. I like I'm, I probably won't be able to touch it for a year. Yeah. But, you know, because of that grandfather clock I built for Rogan, it's it created um, more of a following on Instagram. Um, it's gotten me more work here locally as well. Um and I sold a grandfather clock just recently um, that I haven't built yet. It was a design that I did on SketchUp. And I did it months ago. And so I get this phone call from a, a couple states away. And the lady said, you know, my husband kept talking about wanting this clock like Joe Rogan and grandfather clock. And she said she never looked at it. And she was like, you know you're not having a grandfather clock in my basement. And then he finally made her look it up and she saw it. And then she got on my Facebook page and, um, and contacted me and said they want a clock. And I said, well, I wouldn't build one like Rogan's. I build them. They're one of a kind. No, none of them are the same, but I have one designed. So I sent them the design and they were like, yeah. And so they send a deposit and, she told me take take my time in building it. She doesn't want me rushed, you know. I, I'm I'm booked out of ways anyways, but um, it was all during the move into the new shop and the new house, and so it was a uh, it was a uh, um, uh, it was pretty cool to be able to actually sell a clock just because of the one I sent Rogan. Yes, right. Off the I think, I um, don't know whether it's the same for you, but or when you see the work being shared by people who are well followed, it either goes one way, in the sense of you get a fuck ton of following, and everyone's going mad and shit, or it just goes the complete other way. <laughs> and, and you're like, what the hell is going on? Like, I just sent him this thing nothing's happened you know what i mean like obviously that didn't happen in your case but yeah you know what i'm saying it's like weird like i almost yeah. um when i got retweeted by joe rogan i was like i'm gonna be a, be a celebrity i'm gonna be a star <laughs> i was like he's got he's got four million twitter followers that podcast episode that he's just tweeted it's gonna have like hundred thousand views i'm fucking i'm sorted it ended up with like five thousand views i was like oh cool. <laughs> yeah but how the fuck does that work you know yeah, well, I think I have a something I say about like with Instagram and posting and 
like I think I, I equate it to skipping rocks on a pond. It's you know you can throw one really hard and think it's going to skip all the way across, and that fucker will drop in the water after two skips, and then you throw one lazy and not really thinking about it, and it'll be the best one you ever threw. And so I think it depends on when you throw it, how you throw it, what you're throwing, and I think there's too many variables. And with social media, you know, I I do put some weight on social media, but not a lot. Um, it's helped me a ton. I don't really feel a pressure to post as much as I, I post when I feel like it's worth it. And, um, I don't get much negativity. Um, I get, uh, I would say really probably a hundred percent positive. The only negative stuff I saw is when Rogan posted the clock and people's comments, you know, it was either that thing's awesome or that's the ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen. And, um, which was hilarious because I, it made me laugh. And my daughter, we were all sitting together that evening. I just, I was, it was late night for me and we we're all sitting down eating dinner. And my daughter, uh, I, my phone starts going crazy. And my, so my daughter's watching the feed and reading the comments and she was deleting the negative ones. And I was like, Oh, just leave them. You know, they're, I, I mean, I do care. I take it into consideration, but like, it doesn't really make me mad or hurt my feelings a lot, you know, but, um, I use Instagram and Facebook as feedback. I use it as a gauge to know if I'm what I think is awesome. If other people think it's awesome, if I'm in the right, you know, I want to build what people want, you know, but I also want to express my artwork. So there's that middle road, you know, and I have to be willing to take a little criticism, but I talk to my brother a lot about the artwork that I do and the furniture I build. And he's an artist as well. Um, and he helps me a ton just being able to bounce ideas back and forth, you know? And, uh, so I'm heavily influenced by him. And we definitely have our own styles and our own goals and directions we're going. But um, you know, he's about, I think he's like 10, 8, 10 years older than me. I don't know. He's old as shit. <laughs> and uh, uh, he, um, he he's a huge influence to me and always has been. You know, I think, you know, you always want to be like your older brother when you grow up, right? If you got one. And yeah, yeah. Um, he was always the... You know, all my friends thought my brother was cool. It was cool how he built cars and fixed cars and do all the motorcycles and things, he, the cool stuff he does. And um, so, yeah, you grow up with that and you're like, well, I want to be cool too, you know? And <laughs> so a little bit of that, but um, he's, he's great. You know, I talk to him very often. He, I might struggle with a design or an idea and, he might throw out an idea that I use and he might throw out an idea that I tell him he's crazy and I'll use half of it, <laughs> you know, wherever you get your inspiration from, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like those little yeah. things, conversation yeah. help you to, um, build what you're trying to make. Um, a question I kind of wanted to ask you as well is like, what's the creative steps? How do you get to point A? Point B, sitting in my room, do you know what I mean? Feeling, right? How the fuck did you come up with this? If you asked me to design it, I don't know. You know, I'll yeah. just be like, um. <laughs> well, I think that's definitely that's something that does live within me. I guess, um, you know, that um, it's just part of me. But um, to, I learned that you know, coffee helps a lot to show up. And, uh, um, there's, you know, there's certain rituals that artists and creative people, maybe all people like to do before they get to work. And I've just kind of accepted that sometimes I'll come out here and just clean and organize. And I'll do that for about 20 minutes and I'll, it doesn't take long to get my shop clean. I clean it often, but I'll realize, well, everything's clean. Now I have no choice but to work on it. 
you know. So I allow myself to take my time and make my coffee and maybe sit down and sketch some ideas and make my notes. But at some point in time, I recognize it and I get right to work. And so it doesn't take long. And that was that, that was from practicing, actually just showing up and getting to work, putting, you know, pulling the welder out, turning it on and just going. And, you know, I would get like a couple hours into it and be like, man, all I need to do is show up. That's the hardest part. And if that takes a cup of coffee or if it, whatever, a phone conversation with a friend and then get to work, then that's what it takes. Yeah, so I just kind of accept, embrace it, and but I make sure I get to work too, you know? Yeah, I guess it's one of those things, isn't it, like I was saying, I mean, <clears throat> you know, with uh, creativity, when it hits you, you all together and it's just you like you create the design and you're like this is so what like this is my creative path like your creative path i might think crap you know go on so, yeah it's uh it's hard to try and understand what sparks creativity and how you get to that journey and that i mean the same with i guess uh i i've just started doing some graphics Photoshop, because um, it's like a side project. Fuck well by that, and uh, I'm kind of going with my own style on it. When I really think about it, I'm, how do I get there? You know what I mean, like, how, why, why is that in me? Why do I? Why am I attracted to that style? And how have I thought of that idea? And I guess it's, it is, you know, that's just yeah. We, we see things and being a perfectionist, yeah. ever knowing your own sort. Of I always add to creative effect. My style is um, affected by a um, little bit of like a motocross. Uh, always liked motorcycles and dirt bikes growing up. Uh, when uh, when my wife and I got married, and uh, she, you know, she has she had a son. Um, when we got together, he was six when I met her and, um, he's now 29 and, uh, he, he wanted to, uh, race motor car. He wanted to ride dirt bikes and I, you know, I loved dirt bikes and stuff when I was a kid and I had a motorcycle almost all my life and, or my adult life. And, um, he, and then we, uh, rode quads as well, but he, one day he said he wanted to ride dirt bikes. So I, took him to the store the next day and bought him a dirt bike. I was put on a credit card, and everything. Cause I, I had a dirt bike when I was a kid and never ran. There was always something wrong with it. You know, and that's the worst ever. And, uh, you know, I just remember it and I was like, well, I'm not going to do that to my kid, you know? And so we went right to the store and bought one new. So it had no reason to not run. And, and it kind of started from there and he, uh, started riding with his friends and, we ended up buying a land, a piece of land across the street from us, and it was just an acre. And I carved out a small, easy motocross track for him to ride on. You know, and hit the jumps and bumps and get used to everything. And um, I ended up buying a four wheeler and going riding with some friends of mine. And we started taking the kid. He was like twelve. We had him on a, a YZ eighty five, which he was barely tall enough for, and we had him out in the woods some of the roughest terrain riding, you know, and, um, he ended up started racing and we took him around Iowa and he did a lot of the local motocross stuff. And then, um, so we, you know, we always watched the races and we were going to races and, um, and so there's, <clears throat> you see like the holes and stuff that I put in my artwork and that's a little bit of influence comes from the motocross world and the racing world because they're always, putting holes in things to lighten it up, you know? And, um, and so I, a little bit of that, those holes you see that kind of comes from the racing stuff that I've been watching and taking some part in. And, um, but yeah, I think that's a lot of where the influence comes from the motorcycle world. And then, um, when we, when I was building machines and stuff, when I was employed at different companies, you know, this one company we built, the pressure washers and the parts washers, they would, 
we would get done building them, clean them all up. And I always thought they were so cool. Just raw steel. You see the welds. I just thought it was really neat. And then they paint it blue, you know, like just their company color blue and put an orange stripe around it. And it was, and it would go in a factory somewhere. And I was like, Oh, that's just ruined it. And, uh, but you know, it's, it's a machinery, but I always thought the raw steel look was cool. And <clears throat> so, um, and then when I worked at a cabinet shop for a motorhome factory, you know, at that point in time, I was remodeling, uh, my own home, but I had also grown up with my mom remodeling homes. Um, you know, she would pay people to do it, but we were, we would buy a home, live in it, fix it up, sell it and move and, you know, get a different house and all around the same area roughly. But, um, so I've been influenced by all of that. My mom's work ethic is nuts she's like 72 she'll still fucking work me in the ground you know and she do she will and uh she um her work ethic is amazing and she never let us sit you know um she bought me a nintendo when i was a little kid and she said that was the worst thing she ever did she never bought me another video game again she wouldn't buy me a game for it not anything and uh it made me lazy <laughs> And does, yeah. but she, she would hold us accountable, you know, in the summers, uh, she did not let us just run free. Uh, we had a list of things to do before we could leave the house or go see our friends or whatever it may be. And, you know, from what I remember, uh, it was almost every day, you know, I could be probably imagining the everyday part, but it was very often that she had a yellow legal pad of paper with my name and my sister's name and a list of things that we had to do. And, uh, and then on Sundays, she always, you know, she'd be there at home cause she worked a lot. And so then we'd work in the yard on Sundays with mom. So it was like, <laughs> she, you know, we were constantly building and doing things, landscaping and improving our space and making it look beautiful. And so, I mean, she's been a huge influence and, um, a huge support in everything I do. Um, she's not, mom's not rich. She doesn't make a lot of money. And, um, but she, she pays me to build furniture for her. Um, I don't know if you ever seen the, the playhouse I built, but I built a playhouse that looks like a caboose. Um, and she was, uh, she was poor when she grew up. And her, they lived in a caboose for a while when she was a kid. And so one of my first projects that I started seeing that I could actually build what I want, what I saw in my head was this project. And she kept telling me she was going to call somebody to build it if I didn't send her, you know, uh, an estimate. And it's hard to send mom an estimate, you know, she's like, and I was like, okay, if you're going to pay somebody else to build it, I'm going to send you a real estimate. And I sent her a real estimate. She sent me a real check. <laughs> and I, so I built this playhouse that looked like a caboose. And I, I just scaled everything down on a, a dining cart caboose. And, but I made it the right size so that kids could play in it. And I put ladders on the outside. I put a ladder on the inside so you can get up and look out the, look out the lookout of the caboose. Um, I put decking on the top so the kids could get up there. They could probably totally get hurt on this thing. And um, I put, you know, I cut out fake wheels and then we found miniature tracking and we placed that underneath of it. And so it, it just had this really awesome look to it. I was, I was super proud of it. And, you know, mom paid me a lot of money to build it and it, um, it showed me what I could do. And so her believing in, in me and putting, you know, willing to send me that money, that was, that was a lot to me. And I, I wanted to take advantage of, I take advantage of every opportunity that's given to me. Um, and, and that was one of them. And since then I've built, I've built so much furniture for her. I actually owe her a coffee table that, <laughs> 
when we started this move process, um, it's gotten lost in the shuffle, but there's a, a car trailer that a, tr a flatbed trailer that came up for sale. I didn't have the money. And she said she would buy it if I built her a coffee table. I was like, deal. And but I haven't built her coffee table yet. <laughs> Too busy, man. That's what it is. Too busy. Yeah, she's pretty understanding, but um, she's been great, you know. Uh, and so I have a lot of great support, man. I, I I definitely have not done any of this by myself, you know. The creativity and the artwork, sure, that's mine. You know, but there's been a lot of support that, um, you know, for my wife and kids and my mom and my brother, and my sisters, and uh, my mom's husband. Uh, he's, you know, he jumped right on board, too. He's just, they've all just been there. And, we, you know, we've had a lot going on health-wise with the kids, too. So um, there's, uh, there's always been that part that kind of comes into play. It hasn't been easy. I'm trying to get no. oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, right now, everything's great. You know, business is going good. I, I love that the shop is here. Again, this is something I've been working for for years. So it's been great to have it here and have the space to spread out. And I was able to get my, um, my trials motorcycle out of storage. It was, I put away all my toys uh, about four years ago. I sold my quad, put my trials bike in storage, put my motorcycle in storage, and um, decided that I was going to focus on this 100% and, and the kids and work in the kids and just get to the goal that I wanted to be at. And so now, now I'm getting the trials motorcycle back out. I'm, I suck at riding it not good at all but it's one of those things continuous improvement you know and uh you know so it's do you know what they are yeah yeah i've uh, i've ridden one myself Charles Boy. okay yeah, yeah yeah you know i'm just like playing around doing wheelies and stuff in my yard and climbing over little things and just falling off of it and just just practicing and taking out some burning off some steam you know yeah. And just having a little fun. Yeah. It's a cool little toy to have. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, they're, they're a workout on their own as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Cause it ain't, it ain't easy to be balanced. You know, it engages your core and it's difficult you know, and you don't want to fall off. And, uh, I think it's, um, trials competitions as well. Like if you put down a competition, wow, it's yeah. all about, you know, not putting your feet down, getting your speed and everything. Madness. You know? People, I think, you know, oh yeah, look, that guy's just having a bit of fun. Yeah, you hop on and see how fun it is. Like, it's a good laugh, but it's fucking hard work as well. It's a it's a real hard work, and um, when uh, you know, we I rode quads for a while, and you wouldn't think that even that the hard work that goes into that, you know, we would we would do some hair scramble races and some motocross races just for fun, you know, just go out and do them and go out and put four laps in on a motocross track on a 400 pound four wheeler. And, you know, and I, you know, I'm totally out of shape, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, you'll find out how gassed you are, you know, and then go do it for two hours in the woods, you know, and that is, that's a workout. And then the trials bike, that's a, that's a whole different animal. You know, your legs, you can't sit. And so your legs just burn. Yeah. It's but, you can get tired quick. Fundamentally, it's all uh, all about the enjoyment, right? Balance. Yeah. Balancing. Time for yourself now, work and family, spending quality time with loved ones. The the balance um can be tough, but um I think we've got a good grip on the balance. Um having the shop near the home and being able to like when dinner's ready, I can go in and sit with the family and eat dinner and chat and then come back out here and keep working. You know, I end up working from about six thirty to 
sometimes 11 o'clock at night, the latest. And But in between all that, I might be working, I might be visiting a client, I might be, you know, hanging out with my kids for a couple hours stretch somewhere in the middle of the day. You know, it's, um, I take it as it comes with the kids and friends that come by or call. And then I just go back to work, you know, and, uh, I do like write my goals down and things I have to accomplish. And sometimes that's why I end up working to 11 is so that I can be ready for the next day. But, uh, for the most part, if, you know, if my son needs me or my daughter needs me, then I, I'm able to shut the doors, lock it and go tend to them and, you know, do whatever. I mean, that's what I was going to say. I think I've gained, like, gauged from your uh, personality is that in the sense of balance, you definitely probably stem a little work and hold in a little bit. I'm relaxed. You're working too hard. <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, some people tell me to relax, rest a little bit, but I think I feel like I get a good balance of it. I play around a little bit, you know, like I said, with the the trials bike just leaning up against the wall. I can pull it out, burn off some energy. It only takes about 15 minutes before you're kind of like, I'm too fat and old to be riding this thing, you know, and uh, and then just put it back, you know, because you might have a slip up or something with it, you know, or you damn near flip it or go over the handlebars or rack yourself or something. And, yeah. and then you're kind of like, yeah, I've had enough of that back to work, you know. Brilliant, man. But it's been an absolute um, pleasure chatting to you. Again, I really appreciate the sign. Is there anything you'd like to sort of add in? Where can people find you? Um, I'm I'm good. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Russell Bill R U S S E L L B I L T, and uh, RussellBilt.com, Russell Bill on Facebook, and. Uh, Instagram's really the best way to follow or Facebook. Um, but other than that, man, I appreciate you having me on. I, I hope you love the sign. I know you do. So enjoy it. Hey, I love it. <laughs> Honestly, I, um, that's work of art, literally. You know? Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful thing. Thank you. Imagine uh, if I awesome. uh, I got you on the podcast and you you know you've uh, you know the JB podcast bit. I'd put blue vinyl around it with uh with orange around around the letters and you just, i'm like <laughs> yeah look at, look at the sign and you're just like uh, i don't think we can go through this pod today. yeah yeah <laughs> i have to change our schedules yeah <laughs> imagine you just see see your sign and it just looks completely different i'm like yeah i love it and you're like what the hell have you done to my sign <laughs> <laughs> but no honestly when i opened it i was i was amazed like even the wood behind and everything quality uh, it's fantastic. All of that was built out of scraps. Every bit of it. Leftovers. Um, the the wood is from a leftover project that I, I put in the table saw and ripped down into strips and made it put together that way. I mean, it, the I don't think I had to buy anything for it other than the light kit. And... Um, the, but all the materials were sitting on the shelf. And so, um, you know, it's all good. Oh, There's man, only really I time. To miss it. I really appreciate it, man. Um, we'll chat off stream anyways for a minute. Um, and I'll plug your Instagram comments. And see if anyone can see you in chat. Okay. So, yeah, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you.